Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We start with skeletal muscle tissue. What is it? It is the most abundant tissue in vertebrates. So most widely whenever we talk about muscles, we generally talk about skeletal muscles. So what do they do? They cause movement of bones of skeletal system. Now whenever we think of bones, Think of bones is like thinking about the skeleton because the bones form the skeleton. Now, if you want to move anything, your hands, your legs, your feet, so everything is made up of bones inside, right? So the bones need to be moved. So this movement of bones is controlled by the skeletal muscle tissue. They are also known as voluntary muscles because these movement of bones are controlled by our will. If I want to move my hand, I'll move my hand. If I want to cook, I'll move my hand for cooking. If I want to play, I'll move my legs or arms, whatever, for playing. So these kind of movements are voluntary movements. That is on my own will. So that is why these muscles are also called as voluntary muscles. Also termed as striated muscles. Now, this is another name for these muscles. Why striated muscles? That is because of their structure. If you look at their structure, um, look at the structure of the skeletal muscle, you will see that there are striations. Striations in the sense there are uh, the muscles have some striped structures. And because of the presence of those stripes, these are called striated muscles. We will look at its structure very soon. As I said, the muscle fibers are long and cylindrical as far as the shape is concerned. They are multinucleated cells, that means one cell can have more than one nucleus. Multiple mitochondria to meet energy needs. Now, if you think of these cells, every time they are doing some other, other work and physical activity needs a lot of energy. So, if you are asking your muscle cells to contract and expand vigorously, so they also need some energy to do that contraction and expansion. Correct? So, from where will they get that energy? Energy has to come from somewhere. And what is energy for the cells? It is nothing but ATP molecules. So, how ATP molecules are formed? By cellular respiration. So, where does this process of ATP molecule formation take place? In the powerhouse of cell. Which is the powerhouse of cell? Mitochondria. So, when you need a lot of energy, then it is better to have more mitochondria. Therefore, in the skeletal muscle tissue, there are multiple mitochondria to meet the high energy needs. Now, if you look at the structure of the skeletal muscles, you can see the striations. You see the striped structures. So, because of these striations, they are called striated muscles. And you can also see multiple nuclear are present. So, this is what, I mean, as far as the structure of skeletal muscle tissue is concerned. So, now let us talk about the function of skeletal muscle tissue. What do they do? So skeletal muscle tissues help in the coordinated movement of limbs, jaws, eyeballs, etc. Now, have you ever observed that the movement is not just any movement I'm talking about, is not just any random movement. There has to be proper coordination when you move your limbs. For example, uh, if you're playing football, do you think that moving only your legs will help? No, right? Even if, when you run, it is not only your legs, but also your hands which move in coordination with your legs, right? Uh, in fact, it is not only your hands, but it is also your eyeballs which move. I and mean, wherever the football is, your eyeballs should look into that direction. So that movement also needs to be coordinated. So this skeletal muscle, muscle tissue helps in coordinated movement of limbs, jaws, eyeballs, etc. Either when it is you are cooking, so when you are cooking, it is not only your hand, but also your eyeballs, all the, the muscles of your fingers, so everything needs to be coordinated. When you are playing, involved in breathing process, so when we breathe in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide, even during that process, there is a lot of muscular movement involved by, by the ribs and the diaphragm. So that is also controlled by skeletal muscle tissue as you can see in this picture. Now let us talk about the next type of muscle tissue that is smooth muscle tissue. 
So what are smooth muscle tissue? These control the involuntary movements of body system. So those kind of movements which are not under our control, which does not happen as per our will. So such movements are controlled by smooth muscle tissue. They are therefore also called as involuntary muscles because they do not happen as per our will. Also termed as unstriated muscles because there are no striations here. The alternate dark and light bands which were present in case of skeletal muscle tissue that is no more present here. So they are smooth muscle tissue. Look, let's look at their structure. They are spindle shaped cells, thin, elongated with pointed ends. So when we were talking about skeletal muscle tissue, they were like cylindrical, long and cylindrical. But here they are spindle shaped. So some sort of something like this. So the tips will be pointed. So here you can see their shape, it is the shape of spindle with pointed ends, right? They are uninucleated cells. That is also one major difference between skeletal muscle tissue and smooth muscle tissue. There they had multiple nuclei, but here they just have one nucleus. No striations are present. So here you do not see that those alternate dark and bright bands. Cell junctions hold them together. Now again, here also these each of these muscle cells, they are joined together by cell junctions. We discussed about cell junctions a few slides back, right? Their function, they are involved in the movement of food along the digestive tract. Now as soon as you eat something, what happens? You eat something, what do we do? I mean, till where in the process of eating, your skeletal muscle tissue are involved. When you are eating, when you are putting the food into your mouth, till then you are moving your hands and all those. Then you are moving your teeth, which is again as per your will, to chew the food. Now once you have chewed the food and you have swallowed it, after that, if you want to stop the food from going into the stomach, can you do that? No, right? Because once you have swallowed it, once it has got into the food pipe, after that the movement of the food will happen on its own. It is not, it, it, it will not happen in a magical way, but it will no more be under our control. So it will be under the control of the smooth muscles which are present along the digestive tract. Similarly, the contraction and relaxation of the blood vessels. For example, the process through which the different blood vessels transport blood to different parts of the body. Again, they take uh, deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body to the heart. So this contraction and relaxation of blood vessels, again, that is also not under our control. So there are also smooth muscles play a very important role. Right? Okay. Third type of muscle is cardiac muscles. Cardiac, the word cardiac itself means something related to heart so these are also termed as heart muscles unique muscles found only in the walls of heart so it is only these kind of muscles are only found here now this type of muscles evolved because initially people thought that okay there are two types of muscles one is voluntary the other one is involuntary but then later they found that the muscles which are present on the walls of the heart, they are very unique. They are neither skeletal muscles nor smooth muscles. Then what are they? So since they had some peculiar characteristics, that is why they were grouped under a separate type of muscle tissue called cardiac muscles. They are responsible for rhythmic contraction and relaxation of heart throughout life. So the heart beats, the beating of the heart, these muscles are responsible for that contraction and relaxation. So they are doing a 24 bar 7 work because every time your heart is beating, whether you are sleeping or you are awake, so every time they are on duty. So structure, few similarities with skeletal muscles whereas few other similarities with smooth muscles. That's what I told, right? So they were quite unique. They were neither completely like skeletal muscles nor like smooth muscles. So here, striations were seen. These alternate dark and light bands were seen, whereas nuclei also, they had just one. 
So striation seen, however, not so prominent, not as prominent as in case of skeletal muscles. Uninucleate. So this is a similarity with smooth muscles, right? Even smooth muscles were uninucleate. Whereas this is a similarity with skeletal muscles. They are involuntary muscles because again, the heartbeat is not under our control. So it will happen at its own pace. Contractile tissue present only in the heart and that is how it is unique. Cell junctions connect them together. Again, they are also connected to each other with the help of cell junctions. Now let us quickly have a comparison between skeletal smooth and cardiac muscles. Skeletal muscles are striated because you see these alternate dark and light bands. Smooth muscles are non-striated. Cardiac muscles are again striated but the striations are not very prominent. Skeletal muscles are voluntary whereas the other two are involuntary. So they are not under our control. Talking about the shape, skeletal muscles are long cylindrical cells. Smooth muscles are spindle shaped with pointed ends. Cardiac muscles are cylindrical branched cells. So it is not like one cylinder, they are, it is like two, three cylinders all in a branched network. Skeletal muscle cells are multinucleate, smooth muscles uninucleate and cardiac muscles again uninucleate. That is only one nucleus. Okay, so I think with this we have discussed all types of muscular tissue. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.